Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So I've been reading a couple of articles about this teacher in Florida, and today one of my subscribers sent me a link to this particular story, and that inspired me to go ahead and do this video. So you have a situation that can be summed up like this. You have a white teacher in a Florida middle school who is living a double life. During the day, she's a teacher at this middle school. And then when she leaves the classroom, she's a racist white supremacist podcaster. And she also had a racist Twitter account that she used to spew her racist propaganda. And this woman has been outed because of this and she has been suspended. She has since shut down the podcast and she has deactivated her Twitter account. And so what I want to do is go through this article, highlight some key points, and then provide my commentary. The teacher's name is Diana Volatich, and um, she had this racist podcast. And this is one of the things that she said. She said on her podcast, I get to talk about topics that people don't like to talk about. They don't want to be seen as a bigot, racist, whatever you want to call it. I honestly don't care. So this is a woman who doesn't care about being perceived to be a racist. Also, this article here points out how she, basically on her podcast, she condoned some very racist views about intelligence. And the article says this, in her most recent podcast on February 26th, a guest railed against diversity in schools, dismissing the idea that a kid from Nigeria and a kid who came from Sweden are supposed to learn exactly the same and have the same IQ. Volatich enthusiastically agreed with the guest and went on to argue that science has proven that certain races are smarter than others. And then she went on to talk about this. She agreed that white supremacists need to infiltrate schools. And the article goes on to say this. They don't have to be vocal about their views, but get in there, her guest said. Be covert and just start taking over the places. Right, Volatich said. I'm absolutely one of them. So she is basically saying that she is one of these white supremacists who have literally infiltrated the schools and help, you know, start to take over the schools. And then you have another example that they cite of her racism, where she basically challenged people to prove that white privilege exists. And she offered to pay a person that could do so a hundred dollars. And then this article goes on to basically prove that she is in fact the person on the podcast and the person that has the racist Twitter account. This article talks about how she taught her students to play along with administrators to help hide some of her controversial political beliefs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, for instance, like if an administrator came there to monitor her class, she basically would say that she would act differently. And she told her students not to be surprised by how she acts. And this is what the article says. She said, it says, I told the kids that I said, guys, when they are in here, I'm going to be different than I usually am. I just don't want you to be shocked. I want you to play along. And they're like, OK, OK, she said in the podcast. And then she talked about this. She talked about um, some issues that parents had raised about how she's teaching. They had raised these issues with the principal. And this is what the article says. It says, I had at the beginning of the year who emailed the principal over my head and basically told her, I'm worried that your teacher is injecting political bias into her teaching. And the principal came to me and she was like, I'm not worried. Should I be worried? And I was like, no. And she believed me and backed off. So I'm going to address that in a second. And then this article points out how this particular school is 90% white. 
how the city that the school is located in, uh, it's Crystal River, and the school is called Crystal Middle, Crystal River Middle School. That city is 80% white, according to the latest census, as pointed out in this article, with black people only making up 7% of the population and Latinos making up about 5% of the population. So I want to go through this article and address some of these points. You know, the first point that I want to address is this question of accountability. This school failed miserably in that department. They failed to uh, properly vet this teacher, and they failed to hold this teacher accountable. Here you have an example cited in this article where parents raised concerns about her injecting her racist political beliefs into the classroom. And this principal, instead of investigating this thoroughly, this principal simply had a conversation with this racist white supremacist and simply backed off simply because this teacher said there's nothing to be worried about. And I think that that's a failure in leadership. And I think that that principal should be held accountable for failing to do their due diligence for failing to do what a school and what a principal should do. Now, I wonder when this woman started this racist podcast. I wonder if it was before she started uh, working at the school or after. If it was before she started working at the school, this school failed to do a proper investigation of her background to uncover this kind of racism. This is something that the school should have discovered, and they should have prevented this woman from teaching young people. Now, the other issue that I want to address is this whole issue of IQ. You know, as I indicated, this woman basically supported the notion that black people are yes, less intelligent than white people. That's what it is when you boil it down to its essence. This is somebody that's entrusted to educate children. And I'm sure that some of those children, even though they are in the so-called minority at that school, there were some, there had to be some African American students in this woman's classroom. And the fact that she has these views about intelligence tells you that this is a person that's not fit to teach anybody. She's not fit to be a teacher. Because if she views black students as less intelligent, she's not going to push them as hard to succeed. She's going to assume that they're not capable. She's going to uh, track them in such a way that they are tracked towards mediocrity and failure instead of success and excellence. And it's a shame that you have somebody like this in charge of educating young people. It's a shame on so many levels. You know, when I think about this and just how a white supremacist can basically crush and destroy the dreams and aspirations of our people, I'm frightened. I mean, I just think of the example of Malcolm X back when he was a, a kid and when a teacher told him that he shouldn't be a lawyer. That's not a good job for a, a black person to be. That's not a good job for a quote unquote nigger to have. That's not the kind of a job that a nigger could aspire to be. And this teacher told him to be a carpenter. Now, I it's not beyond the pill to imagine this white racist teacher telling young black kids something similar to that, given the fact that she believes that black people are not as intelligent as white people. And that prospect is frightening. And that just brings me um, to another point, like about entrusting our enemies to educate our children. It reminds me of something else that Malcolm X said about how only a fool would rely on his enemy to educate his children. And that's what we are literally doing when we entrust our children to these kinds of people. We're allowing our enemy to educate our children. And that's that's something that's crazy. And, you know, another point that comes up from this is like, 
the fact that these white supremacists understand that the children are the future and the way that you gain control of the future is by um, educating your your children to espouse certain beliefs or to continue your legacy. So this woman understands that and she's dropping poisonous seeds into the minds of the youth, trying to inspire them to take up the mantle of white supremacy. This woman is literally poisoning the minds of young people, much like how people poison a lake with toxics, with toxic substances. That's what this woman is doing. And she wormed her way into the school. She talked about infiltration, wormed her way into the school system, just like a parasite worming its way into the body of a host. And she's destroying it from within. And that's why, you know, again, the background check is crucial. And these kinds of people shouldn't be allowed to teach our children. They shouldn't be allowed. Because we have to understand that we're at war with these white supremacists, man, on every single level. Whether we're talking about the classroom, whether we're talking about the realm of politics or the criminal justice system, these people are our enemy. And we're at war with them. And we have to understand that, man. They have to be weeded out of the schools and out of every facet, every institution of power and influence. They have to be weeded out. Much like how you exterminate roaches in a house or mice from a house. Push them out. That's what has to happen to these white supremacists. They have to be driven out of these spaces of power. You know, there was a time, as I mentioned in my recent video about Richard Spencer. I mean, there was a time when you had KKK people who were the sheriff, who were the judges, who were the politicians, who were the teachers. These people had power. And we have to make sure that we never return to a time when white supremacy is openly embraced. We can never allow ourselves to return to a time when these people are the sheriffs, when they're the judges, they're the politicians. We have to push these people out. And I'm glad that this woman got exposed. You know, from what I understand, some activists exposed her information, you know, exposed the fact that this was a teacher at a school perpetuating this racism. And because of that, she got suspended. And her podcast is shut down. So, you know, I'm glad that that happened. And, you know, I think that also we have to be prepared for our opposition to try to do the same thing to us. To try to, to, try to attack us. You know, those who are outspoken about various issues. We have to be concerned about that, man, because it's... I wouldn't be surprised if these people don't try to um, come back at black voices who speak out. You know, these white supremacists or other people who don't like what vocal activists have to say online. They may try to contact people's places of employment and try to attack them there and stuff like that. So we just have to brace ourselves for it. But we have to bring the fight to these white supremacists. They are not fit to be teachers. They are not fit to be law enforcement officials. Because as a teacher, you're not supposed to discriminate against any student based on their race. You know, that's against the law to discriminate against students based on their race. It is against the law, for instance, obviously for a police officer to use discriminatory policing tactics. Like what we saw uh, in the situation involving Walter Scott where you had this Charleston police officer shoot that brother in the back multiple times, killing him. That guy was nothing but a white supremacist. Now, he wasn't technically, um, you know, a member of the KKK, but they don't have to be. You know, that goes to that whole infiltration thing. It makes it easier for them to infiltrate when they're not officially a part of any group or anything like that. So those are my 
points about this whole issue. Um, tell me what y'all think. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.